Have you ever wondered what focus is? I don't mean the difference between focus and blurry, like when you're just turning the dial on your telescope as you try to bring an image into focus. But what is physically happening with light when a subject is brought into focus? I've pondered that question many times. And when I go onto the internet and look up the answers to that question, I get answers like this. In geometrical objects, a focus, also called an image point, is the point where light rays that come from a point on the object converge, come together. And I get diagrams like this. And the more one explores the internet, the more one finds these very condensed and convenient mathematical formulae, which also describe various aspects of focus. But it turns out a tiny minority of people in the world are not physicists or engineers. And they often find these kinds of answers esoteric and unsatisfying. So I thought I'd see if I could find a more visual way to explain just what focus is. The goal being not to understand what happens to an image, but what happens to light itself when it comes into focus. To begin this journey toward understanding focus, we'll study an earthbound object, a simple leaf. Here's our image. Light rays emanate from it. They pass through our lens, whether that is a, something like a camera lens or a telescope, and the light rays from each point of the object must be brought together to an equivalent point on the sensor in order that we see them in focus. Light rays on the upper points of the leaf must come together to show clearly the upper points of the leaf. Light rays in a vein partway down the leaf must come together to show clearly the vein partly down the leaf. To be in focus, the light waves that originated at any point on the subject, in this case our leaf, must coalesce on the same point of the image they will form on the other side of the telescope. To clarify what I mean, I'll designate each light wave with a letter here. So the light waves from the upper point, we'll just call A, and they must converge at A on the image to form a sharp image of the upper points of the leaf. The light waves from section B on the leaf must converge on the image at B in order to form a sharp image of the upper quarter of the leaf, and so on down through C, D, E, F, and G. Now, so far this would seem simple, right? The light just has to travel straight across through the telescope or lens and come down on a sensor arranged how it started in order to form a focused image. Unfortunately, reality is more complicated, messier, and gets in the way of such a neat picture. If an object is close, the light rays it reflects will enter the lens at an angle. And the closer the object is, the more at an angle this will be, like so. When the subject is close to the lens, the light rays spread out. Very literally, the information is being scattered, and in fact blurriness is the scattering of light's information. So if this were not corrected by adjusting focus, the image on the other side of the lens would look something like this. The image is blurry because the waves of light do not align properly with the points where they are supposed to land. Thus, the information carried in the light waves is literally scattered. Whether the issue is that the light waves are too spread out, or perhaps too concentrated, as here. If the light waves originating from a point on the subject do not land at a point on the image, which correlates with the point from which they originated, the image will ultimately be blurry. This is a typical diagram portraying how focus works. The elongated upside-down triangle on the right designated object represents what the lens is looking at, and the upright triangle on the left designated image represents the image that is produced by the blue oval designated lens in the middle. The red line traveling from the point at the bottom of the object to the correlating point at the top of the image represents light traveling straight from one point to the other, and the dark greenish line that travels straight to the lower part of the oval of the lens represents another light wave radiating from the object and being refracted by the lens to come together at the correlating point at the top of the image triangle. There is a lot more information in this diagram, but for now we're going to ignore it, as we continue to build, step by step, our understanding of what focus is and how it works. Now, for myself, I've always found this diagram, it's useful, but it's also esoteric. I have a little background in understanding these kinds of things from years of scientific training in university, but even then, I find this diagram doesn't really explain a lot unless one has much of a physics background or an engineering background, which admittedly, I do not. So, for that tiny minority of people who are not physicists and engineers, let's see if we can come up with a good way to understand what this diagram is telling us is happening with light when it's brought into focus. In the simplified diagram, we see our object on the right and our image on the left. The blue oval in the middle represents a lens. The yellow line represents light passing from the lower points of the object through the central axis of the lens 
The light passing through the center of the lens is not refracted by lens curvature and travels straight to the image. The blue line represents another wave of light emanating from the lower points of the object and moving at a different angle toward the lens. When that other light wave, represented by the blue line, reaches the lens, the lens refracts it, or bends it inward, so that that light also reaches the correlating points on the image when the light lands on the sensor. To be in focus, all the light from every point of the object must reach the correlating points on the image, like this. It is important to understand that the lines in the diagram are a simplified representation of an entire field of light, millions upon millions of light waves, all traveling from the object through the lens to where the image will form at the same time, like this. You will undoubtedly have noticed that the image has rotated 180 degrees. This happens because the light has been curved inward by refraction, and on the way over to the focus plane, it crosses over itself. Thus, the information of the image that they carry is now inverted, like this. The waves of light physically cross over themselves on the way to the focus plane, and at that point, all the information they carry is inverted, so that the image that forms appears rotated compared to the original object. The focus plane represents that physical place within the image circle where an in-focus image can actually be formed. The focus plane may move back and forth depending on such factors as how distant the object is or temperature changes affecting the optics. Focus diagrams also portray another characteristic called focal plane, which defines where light rays would come into a focus point were they entering the lens in parallel. While the focus plane may change depending on the distance of the object from the lens, or the temperature of the atmosphere or optics, focal plane is a fixed characteristic of a lens. In the case of convex lenses, the more curved a lens is, the closer the focal plane will be to the optical axis or center of the lens. If trying to focus a camera sensor mounted on a telescope, typically the focus device will move the sensor back and forth until it finds the focus plane. And that's where the image will form in focus. One would not search for the focal plane to find focus. The focal plane is a fixed characteristic of the lens, a mere descriptor of the lens. And no matter where the object is or what position the lens is in, the focal plane is always out at the same distance from the optical axis of the lens. In my opinion, it is unfortunate that these terms are designated focal plane and focus plane, as the similarities between the terms have led to a great deal of confusion. Now you may be wondering what it's meant when it's said light waves enter a lens in parallel. When an object is close to the lens, light waves reflected off that object can enter the lens at various angles. But as the object moves further and further away, only light from narrower angles can enter the lens. When the object reaches optical infinity, that's not true infinity, it's optical infinity, then only light rays moving straight at the lens or in parallel to the angle the lens is pointing can enter the lens. Optical infinity has a flexible definition, but it's typically defined as 400 to 4,000 times the focal length of the lens. The more certain that you want to be that all the light rays are coming in parallel, the further away you would consider to be optical infinity. For astrophotographers, everything that we shoot is well into optical infinity. Apart from the confusion created by similar points of the focusing process having similar names, such as focal plane and focus plane, and as you can see on this diagram, even a focal point, there is also the problem that such diagrams seem to imply that when light comes into focus, it is at a small point. Diagrams do this because they are fundamentally shorthand for what is actually happening in nature. Try thinking of it this way. Any object consists of, essentially, an infinite number of points. And when a lens brings that object into focus, it is bending the light coming from all those points so that they land at corresponding points on the focus plane. This very simple diagram, I think, best illustrates what happens to light when it is focused. The light originates from the object on the right. It passes through our optical element, in this case, a convex lens. The lens refracts the light to where it'll be picked up by a sensor, such as your retina or the sensor of a camera. If where the waves land in the image does not correlate to where they originated on the object, the image produced by the lens will be blurry, as we see here. So we move the lens to change the alignment of the various light waves, so that each light wave lines up in the image with the corresponding point from which it originated in the object. And when that happens, all the information carried by the millions of light waves from the object are organized into a sharp and crisp image. As an aside, all points of an optical lens or mirror 
refract and curve all points of light from an object at all times. Which is why the secondary mirrors that block certain telescopes such as Newtonians and schmidt cassegrains don't create what would appear to be a big hole in the middle of the image. The secondaries are so out of focus compared to the objects at optical infinity, which is to say their information is so scattered that they can't be perceived in the image. But the complete object that we are imaging can be found in any point of the mirror. All that information gets reflected down to the camera sensor, brought into sharp, crisp focus, and there we get a complete image. And, as another related aside, it is not strictly correct to say that those blockages are not visible. They are, in the form of reduced light reaching the primary mirror. All light from the deep sky objects that astrophotographers study, whether from objects as close as the moon or from as distant as galaxies a billion light years away, arrives in our telescopes as light waves traveling a parallel course. Because they're as good as can be at optical infinity, and that means their focus plane will virtually overlay the focal plane. Those slight variations in the focus can be induced by atmospheric temperature changes, equipment temperature changes, and other changes. The light waves, which are at the same time particles called photons, travel the vast void of space. And imagine the sheer staggering chance that some of them will fall into some telescope somewhere here on Earth and be observed. Passing through a telescope, they will impact a mirror, be reflected from a secondary mirror, and those not lost in magnification will be gathered upon a camera sensor where, if they have been properly focused, the photons or light waves originating from each point on the DSO come to a corresponding point on a sensor, thus building an image. To me, the whole process is amazing. To think that photons could travel countless trillions of kilometers, over hundreds, even millions of years, and one day be realigned and reassembled within the glass and mirrors of a modern telescope to portray that far off, long time ago place from whence they came. It's an amazing thing. And that, my friends, is how focus affects light, to the best of my understanding anyway. And again, I'm not a physicist nor an optical engineer. I'm just doing my best to make sense of the information. I hope you've appreciated this video and have a better understanding of how light works when it comes into focus, and perhaps even a bit better appreciation of the amazing journey that it takes to get here. If you have any thoughts, questions, or observations, please leave them in the comments section below. And thank you for watching. If you like this video and my others, please take a moment to like and subscribe. Now, I was able to get a good night of imaging on the Tulip Nebula. I'm up to about 20 hours of integration time, and it's time to process that data. And as for you, I hope for you the weather is clear. Now get out there and shoot the sky.